Hey guys, we are going to be doing a few video tutorial series um, about some IT topics that we consider important and frankly they're just fun for us to talk about and teach. I hope we're teaching, maybe you guys learn a little bit from us. So the first series that I'm going to do is going to be about batch scripting and the command prompt uh, on the Windows platform. Now you veteran IT guys out there are probably not going to get a ton out of this series. You probably write batch scripts in your sleep. But I hope you'll agree with me when I say that batch and command and the command prompt are some of the most powerful tools you can have uh, when it comes to working with Windows. So those of you who are just graduating school, or just getting your first real IT job, what have you, you probably don't have a whole lot of experience with the command prompt outside of the odd IP uh, config command or you know a batch script that'll compile your scripts not scripts, wow, that will compile your language I can't speak, that will compile your projects for your programming classes um, what have you. So the main difference between batch and other programming languages is that batch is not a programming language Batch is a scripting language, and that used to mean a lot more than it does now. Back in the day, um, scripting languages used to not be as powerful as they are now, but these days, batch scripting, batch scripting, scripting languages, uh, PHP, Python, uh, PowerShell, what have you, and Batch, they can do a lot of stuff that used to be reserved for your more full form programming languages. So let's get into it. Let's I'm gonna show you guys a lot of the cool things you can do with batch. So let's take a look. The first thing I want to show you guys about the command prompt is how to navigate through the file system. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So open a command prompt or not a command prompt, open the start menu and type in CMD and hit enter and that'll bring up a command prompt so this C Windows System 32 currently this is your working directory um, the System 32 is basically your operating system files that you really don't want to screw with so let's get to a more friendly directory let's let's get to the desktop so the command for that is CD and then whatever path you want to go to. So I'm just going to go to the root of C. If you want to see what's there, hit DIR. And that shows you all of the folders that are located under the directory you're in. So to get to my user or to my desktop, it's CD and then the rest of the path. So CD users slash Tyler slash desktop. Now if we hit dir, you see that I'm in my desktop um, and this is just useful Just play around with it navigate all over your computer just I guess be careful and don't like I said don't screw with anything in your uh, in your Windows directory uh, but the rest of it you won't hurt anything by navigating through so let's talk about why the command prompt is useful before we're getting into any actual scripting. So scripting in itself is designed to automate tasks. Um, if you wanted to view your shares, um, let's say on a server or something, you would have to hit the start menu, right click on computer, I think it's right click on computer, or actually on a server, it wouldn't because that would bring up the server manager and I don't like the server manager. If you just type in computer management and it'll bring up this GUI. Uh, shared folders, shares. This shows you all of the shares. Now this is a perfectly acceptable way of viewing your shares, but if you needed to automate a task that was dependent on I don't know making sure that the admin dollar sign share actually existed because there are ways to turn it off now what the admin dollar sign and C dollar sign shares are they 
our default shares that are created by Windows uh, every time it boots. And these are designed for remote administration. Um, and like I said, there are ways to turn them off. And depending on your environment, somehow they may have gotten turned off and you may need to know that. So having to go around and look at every computer manually like this is not, you know, it's just not practical, especially if you've got, I don't know, 200 computers to look at. So if you wanted to automate this, you would use a command net share. This shows you all of those shares and there are ways with the batch files or the batch scripts that we're going to write that you can actually use this information and run it through some logic and extract it and do whatever you need to with it. So let's go a little bit further. Let's say you needed to know the permissions on the admin dollar sign share. Net share admin dollar sign. Now, this shows you most of the information, but you see the system error five has occurred, access is denied. This is because we're not running this command prompt in an elevated manner or as administrator. So let's close out of this. Type in, uh, go to the start menu again, type in command or CMD. Instead of just hitting enter or clicking on it, right click on it and go to run as administrator. Okay, and that brings up the command prompt again, except this time there's this nice little administrator uh, string in front of your path. Um, so now we're elevated. So let's, you know, we can work from here. That's all right. We're not going to do anything as damaging. So net share admin dollar sign. There we go. Now we can see the maximum amount of maximum amount of users. Um, if anybody was actually using like had a session open with the admin dollar sign share on my computer we would see that user right here and we get the permission so that's I mean it in its current form in this very basic example there's probably not it's probably not obvious why this is so useful but we'll get to that in a later video so you can do that you can echo system variables or print out system variables. Echo is the basically the print command for batch. So echo percent sign denote, uh, denotes variables. Echo, where was it, time. Then close the percent sign. And that gives you the time. Let's say we wanted to see what the processor architecture was. Um, so, and that would be useful if you were trying to install, let's say Java, for instance, uh, in Windows 10, the 64-bit Java uh, version of Java is all that you're going to be able to get to work. Um, so you wouldn't want to install a 32-bit version of Java on a Windows 10 machine. So you would have some logic that said, you know, if the processor architecture is not 64 or is not 32-bit then we want to install the 64-bit version of Java. Um, you can get the serial number. So WMIC BIOS gets serial num number. Now, if you're on a Dell machine uh, and you need the service tag, this is what that would give you. Now, I'm on a custom-built machine, so I don't have a serial number that I've typed into the BIOS because that's just not something that I need to do. This is not, I mean, this is just my machine, so I'm not going to do that. But let's say that you are in a, an environment that has servers that are a hundred miles away and you're on a support call with Dell and they need the service tag. Well, you're not going to be able to get out there and get it by the, you know, you're not going to be able to look at the machine and get it. So all you'd have to do is remote into the server, enter this command in, and you would have the service tag. Uh, and you could write a script that would go through and get all of your servers. It would get, or it would find all of your servers and get the name, the DNS name of the server that you want. And using this command, <clears throat> you could tie the serial number 
to that DNS name and have a nice little report that you could look at at any time you needed. Um, let's look at, okay, so let's say we needed to know what processes are running. So type in Q process and hit enter. And this shows you all of the processes that are currently running on your machine. So let's, let's, let's make, let's, I'm going to show you how this is. Let me make this a little bit more useful for you. Let's get back to the desktop. So C slash uh, user slash Tyler slash desktop. Okay. So let's use that same Q process command. Oh, that's something I should mention. If you hit the up arrow, you can start cycling through the history of commands and that can save you some time, especially on the longer commands. You don't have to retype them every time. So Q process, let's say we want to find the processes that are Microsoft related. So Q process and then find, sorry, pipe, find Microsoft. And this shows you all of the processes that are running that have Microsoft in the name. A step further with this, we can actually input this into a text file. Um, if you notice, there's a lot of information here. And on the commands, especially on a server, let's say we run the net sessions command. Well, that, that's not a good example though because I'm not on a machine that has a bunch of sessions. But if you're on a server that has a hundred people connected to it and you run a net sessions command, it is going to list all of those people and all of the sessions that they have open. Sometimes the buffer, uh, of the command prompt is not big enough to actually show you every one of those. So it would be really useful to have that in a text file to where you can actually go back and reference it. Um, so let's do this Q process again. So Q process, uh, find Microsoft. Well, let's, let's use a different one just for, well, it's a lot of them that I got open. Well, it looks like Microsoft is still going to be the best bet. So Microsoft. Now, if you hit the greater than sign temp dot text. Now what this is going to do is create a file with this command as the input into the file at the root of whatever directory you're in. So when I hit this and hit dir, now you can see there's another folder, a file here called temp.txt. Now if we type in temp.txt, it's going to open that up in Notepad because that's my default text editor. And you can see all this lovely information in this file um, and now you can copy it easy um, if you had this in a CSV um, you could import it into Microsoft Excel and do a lot of stuff with it so I'm um, hopefully that kind of gives you a very basic example of why you should get used to using the command prompt um, so let's move on to that script that you guys have probably been expecting. So let's close all of this out because we don't need it. So get a text editor. I like Notepad++. Um, it doesn't matter what you use, but just get something you're, you're comfortable with. So let's open up the text editor, Notepad++. And let's write, whoops. Uh, Let's write the ubiquitous hello world script. And literally all it is is echo hello world. Um, if we were to run that, uh, tell you what, let me make a directory on my desktop and I'll show you something else while I'm at it. So right click on your desktop, uh, and hold down the shift key. When you do that, you see this nifty open command window here. And what this does 
is it saves you from having to navigate from that Windows uh, System 32 to whatever directory you need to work in. So as you can see, we're on desktop. So let's type in make dir scripts. Now, if we list the dir, uh, the directory again, we get this nice little scripts folder. So let's open that up. Well, I can't open it up that way. Uh, let me drag it over here. I can't drag it over there. I forgot. My screen capture software is irritating. So, da, da, da. I guess I can open it. So there's the there's the scripts folder I just created. So echo hello world file save as desktop scripts. Now change your save as type to .bat. Let's see. Okay, so we'll do hello world. Whoops. Dot .bat. Now let's run it. Doesn't do a whole lot. Um, and the reason why is that because batch is a scripting language, it runs, it executes the script and then goes away. So let's do this again in your, in that scripts directory, hold the shift key hit, uh, right click open command window here. Okay. Now type in hello world. So you can see. It runs a script, says, you know, it prints that line, echo hello world, and then it runs the command. Uh, this is the very basic hello world script. Let's make it a little bit better. So the first thing you want to do is type in at, at echo off. Okay, let's save it and rerun it. Now we don't get this extra line. Basically, whenever you run a command from a batch script, it is almost like you are physically typing that command in and then pressing enter and then seeing the output. And that's why we see this extra line here that we didn't put in, but the script automatically inserted for you. So turning the echo off, gets rid of all that mess. So, da, 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 da. Like I said, I've got this nifty little cheat sheet. So echo off, echo hello world. Let's make it wait a minute. So timeout slash T. Let's make it wait 10 seconds. Okay. And then, I don't know. Let's say we want it to ask for your name, and this is going to be user input. So set p or uh, slash p name, and we're creating a variable here. And then because we're using the slash p switch, we're saying we want to get the input from the user. So we're going to say, please enter your name. And this text is what's going to be displayed. It, it, this is going to be the prompt, essentially. So set P. Okay. What do we want to do with it? So echo high. Again, we're going to be playing with variables here. So percent sign name, comma. The time is time. And then just something goofy. I'm going to sleep now. Okay, if we run this, get this hello world, and then this little irritating waiting for five seconds, press a key to continue. Now you could press a key to continue and just skip that, but let's not worry about it. So now it's asking me for my name. So I'm gonna put my name in. Something went wrong and I don't know what it was. Hmm. 
Wait a minute. Okay, so what you just saw is me being an idiot and I made a boo-boo. Uh, you have to be very careful with white space in batch scripting. Uh, basically what happened is that because I had a space here, it didn't recognize that I had actually input anything into that variable. So that's where we're at with it. Let's first get rid of this waiting for nine seconds, press a key to continue crap. So all you gotta do is redirect your input to null. Uh, and this is the same concept as redirecting your, your command to a text file as I showed you earlier um, with that Q process command. Okay, so let's look at the difference that made. Now you can't see it. Now, of course, you could always press the a key uh, to get past that, but that's not that's not that big of a deal. So let's type in my name again. Now, this is, I mean, we've got pretty far with this script, but let's try to run it again. Okay. Now it's not going away as fast as time because we have that timeout command in there. And basically the timeout just says, hey, pause everything for a second. And then after this time frame has elapsed, we'll move on to the next line. Okay. Oh, it disappeared again. It's because there's no it, it's a script, so it's going to run and execute every command and then close because it's done. What we want to do to prevent that is type in or put a pause in the script. And it's literally just pause. Okay. Save it. Run it again. It's going to wait its 10 seconds. Okay. Now, that pauses and lets us see what we're uh, see what the program did. And now, if we press any key, it's going to close out the window. And that's really what we want. We want to be able to see the execution of the file and see the output, so that you can actually get the information and use it. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much all we're going to cover on as far as this first script goes in this first video. Um, hopefully it's been good to get your feet wet, um, with it. And the next video will be much, will be a better script. I promise. Um, a, the final note that I want to make though, as you saw, we had to run this script this way until we put the pause in. Now, in the real world, you're not gonna want your scripts to have pauses in them because that requires human interaction, okay? The, when it comes to testing and troubleshooting your scripts uh, that may not be running uh, correctly and they're popping up and disappearing uh, before you can see what's going on um, or like I said they're not going to have a pause in them this is a perfectly good way to troubleshoot uh, your scripts because let's say that there's an error let's put an error in here intentionally uh, let's let's say we forgot the T switch in the timeout command. Now let's run it. Or, uh, yeah. Well, maybe that was a bad example. Uh, <laughs> let's not take out that. Uh, 
Okay, now we get an invalid syntax error. And it's still going to continue with the rest of the script, but you would want to know that this line of the script isn't working. So that's just kind of a tangent tidbit. Um, so let's go ahead and close out of this. Close our script and close everything. So like I said, guys, this is just a very basic um, intro into batch. Um, look, f just keep an eye out for more videos and I'll get into, I'll get more in depth, uh, with actual scripts that do stuff. Um, and if you liked it, make sure you hit the like button. If you disliked it, well, you know what to do. Um, if you got any comments, let me know. Um, I want to make this series as useful as possible. So if there's something that you have questions about, I'll be more than happy to answer them and address them in future videos. Um, and if I got something wrong, then let me know that too, because if there's a better way of doing something, I mean, as a programmer, as a scripter, as a person, you never stop learning. And that's the best way to share knowledge is that everybody who knows something puts it together and eventually all of you know everything. Um, so again, just comment, let me know if I screwed something up. Um, and I guess I'll see you next time.